everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Randy. So last week I started this special. It is Dave Chappelle, Deep in the Heart of Texas. And you all have let me know in the comments that it was originally on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on Netflix or not. But since it's on YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and react to the rest on YouTube. Hopefully there's no more repeats because in that first reaction there were about three minutes that were like copied over. But for those of you that don't know, if I try to do this with Netflix, like if I pull up Netflix on this monitor, I have two monitors, so if I put up Netflix on that monitor and try to put it here as a box for you, it just comes up black. Netflix um, will not let me record. Amazon Prime Video is the same way. I haven't checked any of the other um, streaming platforms. Maybe I should check those out. Anyway, so we are going to watch the second. I'm making it into three reactions, so we are going to watch the next 20 minutes of the special. And then next week I will watch the last 30 minutes. I really enjoyed the first segment that I've watched of this. So I'm excited to see what else he has in store for us. You all are probably tired of me talking. So I'm going to stop with that. So here we go. Because she called somebody an N-word 30 years before she had a show. I'm going to need to back that up a little bit more. Sorry. Um, I am recording this. February 8th, 2022, and there's a whole lot of stuff, as some people are calling it the Spotify saga because of Joe Rogan uh, and misinformation and then some of the word usage. Anyway, so I want to back it up and get a little bit of context on what he was saying. Paul Dean, remember Paul Dean got fired from the Food Network? Okay, if you know anything about show business, it is really hard to get fired from the fucking Food Network. <laughs> And they dropped that bitch like a hot potato. <laughs> All because she called somebody an N-word 30 years before okay. she had a okay. show. So now I see what he's saying. I don't know who she said it to, but whoever it was just looking at her like, I'm going to get you for this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and she came back 30 years later like a Bill Cosby rape and sunk up out of shit. It's terrible. And every black person was mad, but we weren't like that mad. It was more, it was more confusing than it was infuriating. I was just like, what? Well, how's this bitch gonna call me a nigga when she taught me how to fry chicken? That's not fair. <laughs> I think Donald Sterling shit was more serious. Remember Donald yeah. Sterling, he used to own the Clippers, and that he got caught on a secretly recorded tape saying some very unsavory things about African Americans. And there's a lesson in that for all of us. The lesson is, if you are old and white and racist in this great country, whatever you do, don't tell your black girlfriend about that shit because <laughs> that's who made the tape. She recorded all that shit and the tape was terrible. He was like, stop bringing these black guys to my games. First we're all confused, like, well, how the fuck are you gonna have a game without us? <laughs> And it turned out that the black guy he was speaking of was none other than Magic Johnson, the billionaire. Unbelievable. Uh -huh. Never even mentioned the fact that he had AIDS, which is the first thing I would say to my girlfriend. <laughs> this guy must be really racist if AIDS is the footnote. Yeah. Well, you gotta be careful, baby. You got the old Ebola. <laughs> I like how I just... You can say well. what you want about that girl, but I'm gonna tell you right now, she is a goddamn hero. As you might have thought these things were happening before, but now you can see it all in front of you without mm. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. That shit actually went down. She sucked that old guy's dick. <laughs> she really took one for the team on that one. It's really gross. This dick is like 80 years old. 
It's like taste and history. <laughs> like five wars on it, civil rights movement, Great Depression. This guy has been fucking from 40 years before Bill Cosby's first reign. It's a very old man. A very old penis. <laughs> But all that shit is still, it's just name calling. It, like, yeah. name calling does not break the modern black man. That's not gonna do the trick. I don't give a fuck about that. Like, if I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, and for some reason, everyone behind the counter had a Ku Klux Klan hood on top of their head, what do you think I'm gonna do in this day and age? Run out of Kentucky Fried Chicken? Not if I'm hungry. <laughs> I go straight to the front. Hey, man, let me get a two-piece. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what he says. You want a biscuit with that, nigga? I thought it came with a biscuit. What's all this attitude? <laughs> I want a two-piece. Chop, chop. You know what it is. <laughs> but I'm not going to be mad. Why would I be mad? He's the one that's got to work at Kentucky Fried Chicken, not me. <laughs> Can't be Don't knock KFC workers. I've never worked at KFC, but I've had like eight to twelve fast food jobs in my life. No, definitely twelve, maybe more. I'd have to go back and I've, I've written them down because my memory's starting to go. But I liked working fast food. My favorite was working Burger King kitchen. I'm good at drive-throughs and registers and stuff, but I liked working in the kitchen. You know. Take a little pride in what you put out and give to the customer, you know. I didn't think of it as a, a less than kind of job. I enjoyed what I did. Anyway. Well, how about this? You don't care. What if I what if I lived in Austin and I had a white girlfriend? It's possible in Austin. As a matter of fact, some people say it's necessary, but that's <laughs> not the point. And me and my white girlfriend at home one night and we're just doing what lovers do. Maybe she's butt naked and she's down on one knee giving me a hand job. I love a good hand job. And she's really jerking me off. You know, getting her obliques nice and tight. I got a huge <laughs> dick, so she's like, hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> And I'm like, wow, this really feels wonderful. I, I think I'm gonna come. And then she looks up at me and goes, cover my face. Nigger. I know that's a tough one. But what do you think I'm gonna do? Hey! <laughs> that's no time for integrity, ladies and gentlemen. I'm busting that nut oh. in her face. I'll sort of do the ethics later. I have a visual in my head of all of this. But I'm what they call a man of his word. If I say I'm coming, well, I'm coming. <laughs> we can fuck what happens. God forbid somebody could shoot me. If I say I'm coming, it's still like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I like getting shot. Yeah. He looks buff. Boy. Yeah, tough time for the blacks. Might be the way he's standing. I'm not gonna say nothing about the police. I'll, I'll leave that for Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Another big sports story was fucking Ray Rice's tape. Anyone see that Ray Rice tape? Mm -mm. I don't know who that is. But I don't watch sports. I for these can't things. stop watching it. It's fucking awful. That's the most violent thing I've seen happened to a woman that was shot in color. Uh, somebody got hurt? Really fucking bad. Like, if I could have froze time at that moment and gave Ray Rice some advice, I don't think there's any way possible I'd be like, you should punch her in the face. <laughs> it's a fucking terrible idea. At the same time, I also believe she shouldn't have rushed him. Uh, what the fuck was he like? No, you can't beat him, miss. Don't rush him, motherfucker. That's trained to stiff on people in the clutch. He's gonna get the upper hand. The only reason I bring him up is because, you know, he's about to play football again. You didn't know that? The NFL 
was told by a federal judge they had to reinstate Ray Rice because he was transparent with their investigation. He told them exactly what he did. And they can't just change your ruling just because the tape came out. I get it. That's like if I'm hanging out with my buddies and I'm like, hey guys, guess what I did last night? I fucked this big fat girl I met at the club. And they're like, oh shit, Dave, that's crazy. And then they see a tape of me doing it and they're like, we can't hang out with you anymore. Guys. That's not what this crew is all about. I'd be like, what? I told y'all what I did. Hearing and seeing. What's really fucked up is the tape was made before they were married. Isn't that weird? I don't know why she do that. I don't even know why he would do that. As a guy, would you want to live with a woman that you had once punched in the face with all your strength? That's some very bold color purple type shit. Siri, come out here and shave me. You got your fucking mind. Fair point. I had to ask an older friend of mine just to get some perspective. This older black dude. Actually, the fairest person I've ever met. And I asked him, I just, I just said, hey, man, I said, did you see that Ray Rice video? And instantly, he was like, David, that shit was disgusting. And then a moment later, he goes, I wonder what she said to him. <laughs> I don't think that matters. <laughs> and the idea is you're not supposed to punch her in the face. <laughs> My wife says terrible shit to me. My wife once called me a pussy in front of dinner guests. Ooh. I know, I started to get mad, but then I was like, fuck it, she's probably right. <laughs> I am a pussy, I admit it. <laughs> I'm soft and warm and persuasive, like a real pussy. Right. And then I told her, I said, and if you don't take care of me properly, I might stink, like your pussy. <laughs> I always fight dirty at the Chappelle household, it's not a big deal. That's terrible. No, 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 no. If you want to get to the bottom of a matter of the heart, what, what you're supposed to do is ask a woman. Now, actually, there's two women that I know. They're both college professors in this little area I live in. And I meet them twice a week at Starbucks for coffee. Talk about important shit. Okay. And I asked the girls who was in the coffee clutch. I said, yo, why y'all think that this woman stayed with Ray Rice after we punched her in the face with all the strength? <laughs> and one of my girlfriends said, David, you need to wake the fuck up. She's staying for the money. Well, now, wait a minute, because my other girlfriend was like, I disagree. I think that she actually loves him. And I said, wait a minute, ladies, you know what? I think that you're both right. And what I was doing when I said that was preserving the possibility of a threesome with these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I've been chipping away at this pussy one cup of coffee at a time for like four years. <laughs> I've been putting all that hard work away with some Ray Rice shit. I can't eat much. He's being real. It's fucked up, man. It's a tough time for the blacks. I love you too. Here comes the banana peel. I'm waiting on it. Like, you know, that's how it starts. I saw on the paper today. Banana peel? I saw on the paper today that the guy that threw the banana at me got arrested again because he threw a banana at another motherfucker in a bar in Santa Fe. Look it up online after the show. He actually did that. And that guy was black too. I'm just saying. And you know what the guy said he did it at night? He said, I did it because Dave Chappelle is racist. So, nigga, that's not the best way to handle that if I am racist. What if Martin Luther King just went around throwing tuna casserole on white people? Would that, would that work? <laughs> huh? I see your girl bubbling. She's drunk as hell, buddy. <laughs> Listen, sir, I don't know what she's saying, but just take my advice. Get some water in her, or you're going to have some dry pussy when you get home. to say I Dave Chappelle is so he, he impresses me with his wit you know what I mean and has also his ability to uh, improvise I guess is the word right there some girl was shouting out possibly inebriated I don't know but he just without taking too long to come up with it made a very funny comment tied into the the audience. I'm not making sense because I hear a child crying and it's messing my uh, distracting my brain but that was quick. You know what I mean? And funny. His dick's gonna be shaped the fuck up tomorrow. Santa Maria. Who got a cigarette there? Anyone got a cigarette tomorrow? 
Uh, yeah, you, you fell out. Oh, yeah, please. Well, let me see this. This is Marlboro Menthol. This could have been anybody. <laughs> it was a new part. I'd be like a black dude through that. But a Marlboro Menthol, that's one of them rentals. Does he smoke? It's bad for you. Bad is for the you smoke offensive? indoors. All right, just checking, just checking. I asked that crowd when we was in Denver, I said, is the word pussy offensive? And the whole crowd said no, except for two people. One was a woman in the front. She's older than me, maybe around my age. Uh, definitely a feminist. You know what I mean? Short haircut, plaid shirt, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she didn't say it offended her. What she said is she said, I'm uncomfortable with that word. And I was like, really? You? Uh, and then before I could ask him why, there was one other guy, he was in the balcony. Now, I don't think he was saying this to me, but he said this. Everybody heard him say, he goes, it's delicious. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard pussy called delicious before in my life. Now, this is not to say that it's bad, but it's definitely an acquired taste. <laughs> I don't think any of us taste the pussy our first time, like, oh. <laughs> it needs something. You know, it's illegal for a gynecologist to say the word pussy. They can only say vagina or they can name individual parts medically, but they can never say shorthand, even if the gynecologist is a woman. I feel like if it's a woman gynecologist, it's cool. Like, am I right? She's like, girl, that pussy is. <laughs> I don't think men should be allowed to be gynecologists. That shit is a conflict of interest. Even when my wife was pregnant, we used to go to the gynecologist. <laughs> And he put her legs up in that stirrup like this. He'd be like, all right, Mr. Chappelle, just try to relax. I push it back up, motherfucker, I got this. Just tell me what to look for. <laughs> One of those home style checkups. There's too many ethical questions when men do that. Like, can a, can a gynecologist lose their license for smelling their fingers during an exam? Is that, is that illegal? How could they not? These are men. It's like if you have a good barbecue, you don't even think about it. You just. That's so wrong. The word pussy is only offensive if you're older. People my age and younger, I don't think we even, we dance to that shit. <laughs> the song come on the radio is I Beat the Pussy Up. That's on the radio. I Beat the Pussy Up. That's a pretty harsh song. It's like nothing like a love song. There's no tracks of his tears, no midnight trains to Georgia. This man simply beats the pussy up. Unbelievable. <laughs> you don't even know if he's having sex with these women. They might just pull their pants down. He'd be like, bah! Dream it. <laughs> like, you'd be watching HBO. Hi, I'm Larry Merchant, standing here ringside with the pussy after a devastating Bible 50 cent. Pussy, come over here and let me talk to you for a second. My God, you look terrible. Your lips seem to be swollen. You're bleeding a little bit. Tell me, pussy, what happened inside of that ring with 50? I don't know, Larry. I felt really good in the first round. I was ready to fight. <laughs> It's warm and moist, and um, I don't know, you just hit me from angles I wasn't expecting. Front, left, backside surprised me the most. Well, pussy, let's take a look at round four. This is where it all went wrong for you. Here you come out of your corner, pussy, you're fighting really good. It looks like you got 50 with a right and a left, but then 50 slips, you jab, and there, there, right there, you see that? He punches you right on that, um, that little bean thing you have on the top of your head, I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's 50 just pounding away at that bean over and over. Now, pussy, tell me, what goes through a fighter's mind when that bean gets rattled around like that? I don't think I was thinking anything, Larry. You know, I'm a real good defensive fighter. It's real hard to get to me. Uh, I've never been punched directly on my bean before. As a matter of fact, most fighters don't even know that bean exists. I guess it just hit me then I lost control of my legs. I don't know what else to tell you. I like when Lil Wayne talks about pussy. Cause he, uh, you know what? I am just astonished at his level of creativity. He just took us through an entire story of that word. I'm not going to say it, but going toe to toe, like rounds, fighting with, I think he said 50 Cent. Oh my goodness. That is just, it's wild. It's so creative. It's a little fascinating, you know? Maybe, maybe fascinating something. I like when Lil Wayne talks about pussy. Yeah. Lil, Wayne, Lil Wayne used to have that song, he say, I got a bitch that plays movies in my jacuzzi. And then it goes like this. Pussy juicy. 
<laughs> that, shit, that shit always makes me laugh. Cause that, that, no guy says that, you know? Only little Wayne says some shit like that. If he was fucking good, she's like, is this pussy good? Like, it's juicy. It's good. Like, pussy was juicy. <laughs> That's why I'm not Lil Wayne. Cause if I was in a hot tub with a girl, and I could tell that the pussy was juicy, while I was in the hot tub, I'd probably get out of the tub. I'm a germaphobe. I just picture little Wayne like, what is this strange oil? floating in my hot tub water. Mm -hmm. It's pussy juice. <laughs> that shit was so funny to me, I must have wrote like no less than 40 jokes with the punchline of pussy juice. <laughs> and all of them worked to some degree 100% of the time. I'll do one more just so you believe it, okay? Okay. All right. In this next piece, it's a special episode of See Inside. For some reason, Lil Wayne's guest starring as the lead detective, okay? That's the setup, are you ready? Mm. Here it goes. Has anyone else been on this crime scene? No. <laughs> it's very strange. Uh, this place is virtually undisturbed. No forced entry. No sign of a struggle. Mm -hmm. Show your flashlight right here to slip in something. What is this? <laughs> what is this? It glistens in the light. <laughs> Smooth to the touch. This is pussy juice. <laughs> <laughs> she must have been sitting Indian style. <laughs> Everybody's mad about something. True. Recently, I got attacked online by some gay bloggers, and it hurt my feelings. Oh, we're going into that. I want to wait. I'm going to go ahead and stop now. I had planned on watching a few more minutes of this, but I feel like this is about to get, like, this part might be better to do with the last one. I don't want to stop, but I also don't want to watch all of it today. Um, and that was so funny. I think this might be my favorite special from Dave Chappelle so far, uh, if I even had a favorite, but this has been so interesting and I don't think fascinating is the word that I'm looking for, but there has been so much creativity in this special and I don't know if I've stopped smiling since I pressed play like 20 minutes ago. Uh, this is entertaining. Let me know what your favorite bits are from this special um, and what your favorite Dave Chappelle special is that I haven't watched yet because after I watch the last segment of this special I'll move on to another Dave Chappelle special and watch it in portions as well. Anyway, thank you so much for the recommendation. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time. Have a good one.